according to Dr. Dr. Nuralainer Mohammed Noor, Secretary General of the Women, Family and Community Development Ministry, it is implementing various programs to achieve targets of more flexible working hours, working from home and providing childcare centers to entice more women back into the workforce. According to the World Bank report, as at 2011, the female labor force participation rate in Malaysia was 47.9% which was below average of other East Asia and Pacific countries currently. 71 childcare centers have been established at various government agencies and 20 in the private sector for working mothers. She also called for the relevant stakeholders to make a full use of the World Development Report 2012 on Gender Equality and Development, which states that improving women's access to jobs and economic opportunities, productivity could be boosted in the region. It must be ensured the strategies and initiatives geared towards gender equality in Malaysia were equivalent to international standards. She said, the 50 million ringgit allocation for women in budget 2013 will be used to train women, as company board members to help achieve the government's target of having at least 30% of women at decision-making levels. Thousands of jobs have been made available by the government for graduate teachers who completed their studies this year. To fill in the 10,000 available postings, graduates must first fulfill the criteria and pass the Education Services Commission's interview process. This star reported. According to Education Minister, Tens Remayidin Yassin, interviews have already been scheduled for 2,960 Bachelor of Education graduates, and those who completed their studies at teacher training institutions before July 1. While the interviews are being carried out, the ministry will give this group of teachers interim postings from October 16 onwards, he said in a statement. Mayidin said that these graduates will secure permanent job once they pass their interviews. This batch includes 2,478 JCAF graduates, 368 TESOL graduates and 90 postgraduate teacher training program KPLI, graduates. The lack of sustained employee engagement, which would lead to staff retention, remains a key challenge for companies in Malaysia, according to the 2012 Global Workforce Study by Towers Watson. The study revealed that 56% of the surveyed employees in Malaysia perceived that their managers were not effective at managing their career development. Slightly more than half of employees, 51% sense a lack of career advancement opportunities within their organization. Without sustainable engagement, talent retention would continue to be a problem, said Yap Sui Feng, Tower Watson's practice leader, organizational surveys and insights in Malaysia in a report by Burnama. This is especially so for employees who do not have a clear understanding of their career growth, and leave for what they perceive as greener pastures. An ineffective manager leads to greater operational risks including talent drain which will ultimately affect business performance, she explained. It is crucial for employers to find ways to improve their manager's effectiveness in dealing with staff, be it in communicating clearly the goals and assignments coaching for performance improvement or careful listening to different points of views before reaching conclusions, she added. While salary is often quoted as being the reason why Malaysians switch jobs, a new survey has found their unhappiness stems from elsewhere. Out of 1,145 Malaysians surveyed for a recent JobStreet.com report, 34% said a poor work scope is making them miserable at work. This includes complaints that they have too much work to do and that it is predictable and boring. Another factor was their poor relationship with their immediate supervisor or boss, 21%. The survey found a total of 78% of respondents claimed to be unhappy at work, with other reasons including unsatisfactory company policies and benefits, 12%, working hours, 9% and poor relationships with colleagues, 8%. Just 17% said their unhappiness stems from issues to do with salary. However, while a large number of employees are unhappy, the remaining percentage are happy and enjoy their work because of the working experiences and challenges. The survey noted 21% of employees are happy because their bosses appreciate and value their input, while 19% said they have a good relationship with colleagues. Overall, Employees agree opportunities for career development and improved work-life balance are needed to change their unhappy work demeanor. If these needs are not met, a majority, 62% said they would find another job. Employees in UK would rather go to work sick, than take leave for fear they will lose their jobs.
A third of employers admit they have had staff who struggle into work when unwell as they were too frightened about being made redundant, a report by the Chartered Institute of Personnel and Development, CIPD, found. The average number of sick days taken has dropped from 7.7 .7 days last year to 6.8 days this year, the Daily Mail reported. We are seeing employees struggling into work to demonstrate their commitment. Presenteeism can be a sign of anxiety, Dr. Jill Miller, a research advisor at the CIPD, said. The concerns of employees' concerns were not uncalled for though. Half of the bosses surveyed said they base a decision on who to let go on workers' absence record. A separate study by Professor Kerry Cooper, an expert in organizational psychology from the Lancaster University Management School, found nearly 30% of 39,000 employees have suffered from sickness presenteeism over the past year. CIPD's report said sickness presenteeism does more harm than good, causing a damaging effect, and putting colleagues at risk of falling ill as well. A funeral director is facing disciplinary action, after chopping up a body that was too big to fit into his crematory oven. William Ellenberg, owner of Metro Embalming and Crematory, admitted to cutting off the fats on the thigh of the body of an 800 pounds, 363 kilograms, woman. I cut the fatty tissue off the side of the legs so it would fit inside that crematory, Ellenberg told CBS Atlanta. Regulations require funeral directors to obtain consent from the family before any deceased body is dismembered. Ellenberg has been suspended by the Georgia State Board of Funeral Services, and it waiting to see if his license to operate will be revoked. Ellenberg does not seem to regret his actions, and said, it wasn't disrespectful. I did what I had to do to get the body cremated for the family. Other funeral directors said while it is common to occasionally come across a body too large to fit into the furnace. The family of the deceased is often advised to bury the loved one instead.